From Israel, it's John's Place Live. Welcome everybody, once again tonight in our audience, actually in our studio from around the country. We have Mr. Paul Wiener, chairperson of the Likud Anglo Division. We have Mr. David Wiener. Have you gotten a title yet from the Likud Anglo Division or? David? Oh, mine. <laughs> what? No, I, I'm just, uh, you know, a regular guy. Okay, he's just, uh, you know. No, he's, he's had a best, he's had a best chemist, special, English speaker. Special guest, Elon Pomerantz, who is the Anglo Likud head man in Tel Aviv. Welcome, Elon. Nice to see you. Thank you. Okay. So basically tonight, there should be only one topic that we don't hear enough about that could be almost as important as the other topic that we hear too much about. Figure it out on your own. Okay, so the question, Paul, I'd like to ask you this question. Is it really possible for uh, Benny Gantz and Netanyahu to forge some kind of deal? And how much time can a government like that even last? I mean, what are we going through this charade already or are, are we on our way to a fourth election? Well, there's a lot of mistrust between the two, what their objectives are, why they're really forming the government, and they don't seem to be able to get together for several reasons. And uh, no offense to Benny Gantz, I mean, he's a nice fellow, and he now he's the uh, Speaker of the House. Maybe that's where he belongs. He's not Prime Minister of material. He doesn't, can't seem to deal with matters. Now we're going into anybody can form the government. So hopefully BB can form a government and then, you know, Benny Gans will join him to make it a larger, you know, coalition. Otherwise, like you said, we're going to go to new elections in three weeks or there will be an announcement that we have to go. All right, Elon, here's your first crack at this uh, crazy show, John's Place Live. What do you uh, think is going on? Well, I agree with Paul. I think it's uh, best and important that a unity government is formed and we avoid a fourth election. Almost, uh, it's almost impossible to think of that being able to be executed uh, with everything else that's uh, going on. Obviously, uh, the uh, crisis uh, with the, the virus around the world as well. But um, it, there's a lot of things going on at once here. We have to understand that this is also a situation where the overreach uh, and the over-involvement of the judicial branch is present once again, and it's interfering in the ability of the uh, two sides to really come to a deal and be able to form the unity government. It's not the only issue, but it seems to be um, one, of the, uh, one of the main issues. And, and that's unfortunate and something that's gonna have to be dealt with, again, on a broader scale. And uh, it's something that we see acutely here uh, when it comes to uh, forming a unity government. But I do believe at the end of the day that uh, it's what's required right now, a unity government. And I think that that's where we'll be at. And I think that Prime Minister Netanyahu will continue in his position um, at the first half of that unity government and do so um, at this extremely important time for him to be uh, in the driver's seat. David, I'm going to come to you in one second because, Elon, you brought up the, the discussion about the fourth possibility of a fourth election and how you are vehemently against that and much wishing that we have a unity government soon, as Paul and probably most people out there. But the wizard of uh, Balfour Street, shall we call him, Mr. Netanyahu, which is a good name for him, he manages to somehow turn every situation in his favor. Now, during all these negotiations, he has slowly but surely made Benny Gantz look like a junior JV person, so to speak, to quote Mr. Osama Obama, Hussein Obama, okay? And now Benny Gantz doesn't have Yesha Tid anymore. There is no Gesher uh, labor um, merits group. So now how is Benny Gantz gonna run 
almost then head to head against Netanyahu. David, what do you think are the possibilities? What happens with that? Well, I look at it like this. So Israel right now, all the kids are at home. Nobody's going to school. There's no universities. Everything is locked down. There's only one person in the whole entire country who's going to school, and that is Benny Gantz. <laughs> right. And Benjamin Netanyahu is taking Benny Gantz to school. I mean, he's really schooling him left and right. I mean, I, I don't schooling know. a lot of people. He, he, he always does, but here you see Benny Gantz, no experience, no nothing, and he's just, this is somebody who has absolutely no experience, nothing. You can see that this guy has worked as a stick figure his whole life, and he, Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, is schooling him left and right, and he, he did, it just he tore it all apart. He tore it all apart. The only, the only thing that's, you know, I mean, the, I think the only thing that can really save us from going into, a, into a, a fourth election, whether it's in three months or whether it's in a year, yeah, for me, it's the same thing. If we go to three months, it's the same as going in a year. There's no difference. The, you know, the only thing that can really save us, I think, is those, the two people that broke away from the blue and white party. They broke away from the, te, uh, what was it, Telen party, I think it was called. The, the yeah. Hen Hen and uh, I forget their two names. But they, those two Hauser, are, Doogie Hauser. Right? Those are the only two people that can, save, that, that can really save us from going to elections because they make number 60 and number 61. After, uh, after, after Gesher left their, their, you know, little, whatever they were doing with uh, Merits and, and, uh, and the Labor Party, that, made, that brought the right wing up to 50, 59. So with them, it brings, up to, brings it up to 61. In reality, that's, that's where they belong. They, they never belong to the left wing if you actually look at who they are and what they believe. They were right wing. They were just, you know, they just didn't think Bibi needed to be there. And I think they need to just get over that already and see that BB does need to be there. He's handling things fantastic now with the virus and everything like that. And he's definitely the, the teacher in the, in the room. I mean, All right, let's just move on to another point here because the negotiations between Netanyahu and Benny Gantz have become somewhat of a secretive game. We really, none of us really know what's on the table, okay? If anyone is looking closely, one would try to figure out how the could has really caved in quite a bit to Benny Gantz based on the numbers and the amount of ministries blue and white are going to assume versus how many the right group are going to assume and how many Likud is gonna, going to reach. And also the types of positions that Benny Gantz's party is going to end up with, whether it's, uh, you know, the defense ministry, farm ministry, justice ministry, communications ministry. These are serious ministries. This is not sports and, you know, cultural, Miri Regev style. Okay. So you're representing a good group, as you say, a region. So I'm going to ask you, Elon, what, what is going on here where the Likud is basically given out the store? Well, I think there's a few dangers here. And um, the positions are one thing. The policies are really the core of the issue. The economic situation after this current crisis is going to be very, very tricky. And we need to make sure that uh, the right wing and the Likud specifically uh, has control uh, over the general policy and the policy direction when dealing with that. More so than that even, is the idea and the situation with sovereignty in Judea and Samaria. We cannot allow a situation, even in a unity government, where there are elements that will try to torpedo that uh, from within and from without. And uh, that is going to be, I think, a lot of the topic of conversation that we're not hearing about in the media uh, and what's being spoken about behind closed doors. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you know, uh, Benny Gantz was thought of as being in the camp that was very anti-confronting Iran directly. We have to make sure as well that that is not a problem in a coalition government, because even though the corona crisis has kind of superseded everything and we tend to not think about a lot of these other issues, 
as could be seen from yesterday on what happened on the Syrian-Lebanese border with a strike attributed by foreign reports to Israel, you know, uh, the bad guys aren't going away. Uh, not so fast. They might have been blunted, slowed down, but they're not going away. So we really have to focus on the policies and make sure whatever constellation comes to being in a unity government, that uh, the Likud and the right wing really has control over what is going to be done and what policies are going to be implemented. Okay, thank you. Paul, let me ask you a question. You know, Based on what we've seen in the past, this whole uh, situation with the negotiating with basically a left of center, future prime minister, a socialist slash communist justice minister, Nissenkorn, um, a bunch of other pretty left wing people joining forces with a right wing or center right-wing government of Netanyahu. How can we not trust, you know, it's like deja vu all over again. I was gonna get that in tonight, Paul, no matter what. You know, the Oslo Accords were secretly and illegally negotiated behind the backs of even then Yitzhak Rabin, who was of the same party as Shimon Peres, but he was far more to the right of them. All this was conducted illegally. Now we can have scenarios down the road that are not you know, fa so far-fetched that Benny Gantz's troops could go on the side and have their negotiating behind the back of Netanyahu. And we don't even know who may end up being the president then, though we would all hope and believe that Donald Trump would continue as president, but there could be a change. And what would then be the situation for Israel vis-a-vis -vis annexing the Jordan Valley and other communities in Yehuda and Shomron? Paul? Well, you know- I know that was a long common yeah. question. Hope That's I didn't lose okay. you. That's okay. But you know, last night there was another article discussing what the actual problems are, which are not, uh, were taken away by this morning because they don't want the press to know what's really going on. It seems that uh, showing his no leadership, Gantz says that He's not forming a government to deal with uh, Supreme Court issues and in their interference in the government. You know, if you want to be prime minister, whatever comes your way, you have to deal with. That's the job of the prime minister. You deal with everything that comes your way. And uh, he wants a guarantee, basically, that how he will be guaranteed a year and a half as prime minister after BB uh, finishes his, his term. And BB wants a guarantee that he won't be thrown, he won't be uh, lose his position as deputy prime minister by the Supreme Court once, because this, it's just like another ministry, once he would leave his position as the prime minister in the first half. And the Jordan, and, and you know, originally, Benny Gantz was said that he was for annexing the uh, Jordan Valley. He keeps going back and forth. And now he's not, he, he wants to have veto power against Jordan, and maybe only certain places. He doesn't know how to make up his mind. It's like everybody else is pulling his strings around. He'd like to have permission from Jordan, Egypt, and the EU to do that. I mean, let's Yair, see how Yair long Yair that Yair lift is He coming. wants permission from Yair Lapid, and that's why it looks kind of fishy in there. Uh, Boogie I alone said he would take uh, Benny Gantz back again and form it again. They're not angry with him. So okay. something fishy going on there. And as like David said, right now, if there's a good possibility that BB can form a government with 61 votes, and that's enough. You got uh, you you got Gesher, and you got the two from uh, Tellen. That's 61, and once that happens, you'll see other people are going to join. I think Amir Peretz and the Labor they really want to join because it's their last hurrah. After this, they're finished. If they go to another election, they're okay. finished for Labor. John, can I, I have, just jump in here for one second? Yeah, just sure, to go ahead. Point. No problem. Uh, what's very important about that whole multilateral approach that you and Paul were just discussing is that we have to realize as well in the new world that we're coming out into after this corona crisis, that whole globalized multilateral way of doing things is going to very much uh, be passe uh, and put on the side. Nations are going to start, you know, exercising their sovereignty more clearly, more aggressively, and we cannot have a government that seeks the agreement 
or the understanding of not only other nations, but nations that are hostile to us in what we do or do not do. Very good. That's obviously a non-starter. Who knows where it comes from? It just shows more of his ineptitude and his lack of knowledge of getting anything done because they don't even make sense, his comments that he's making. Okay, so Ooh, here's the damn. scenario. Here's the scenario. In a couple of days a week, I don't know when our president, who gets involved in things too much anyway, decides that there will be fourth elections. I came up with four things that I'd like to know what happens in the future elections. You can all pick any of the four items and give us your ideas, okay? Just raise your hand, whoever wants to begin, okay? One, what happens with the Likud party? Because there are going to be some black backlashes from people who are ministers who got bumped around and near, guys like Nir Barkat who has promised the finance ministry and that's not even close to happening, all the things. So what really happens to the Likud in the next election? Also, what happens to Blue and White because now they don't have a Yesha Tid? Do they recouple up? Does uh, the other clowns come in or are they done? Okay, and then obviously, Number three and four probably could be put together. What happens to the merits, labor, Gesher group, which is no, no group at all anymore? And also, where does Yamina fit into all this, which they've seemed to not been able to forge an identity from, from, from the time they sat, they started to go out on their own, the beginning of the three election cycles. Okay, who wants to answer what? Please, we open it up to the panel. Well, I'll jump in on the, the the last question you brought up. I mean, Yamina. Was, yeah, Yamina. I think was uh, from the very beginning was a joke. Uh, that, from my opinion, I think Bennett has been a disaster uh, for the for the more uh, what's in Israel kipas Hoga, the more the religious uh, Jewry. He, he was he was. A, Disaster from the beginning because he didn't he didn't take the the he didn't take the rain, the reins there and actually try to bring together all the religious Jews that weren't uh, from the Haredi parties. He he decided he was going to go and try to be the new Likud, and that's the same thing he's doing with Yamina. He's trying to be the new Likud, but there is a Likud and they have a huge following and they have a huge amount of uh, of uh, you know members in, within the Likud. And they're lifelong Likudniks. And here he's trying to ba basically trying, he's been trying his hardest to tear it apart. It's just not happening. What he ended up doing was he ended up tearing apart the, the, the Zionist religious right wing that did have also people that weren't religious in the party. They were voting for them, but, but they can't, they, they have been able to find their legs now because, because he basically ran the party to the ground. And I think that's what he's doing also to Yamina. He, there's no real Yamina. Yamina is, they can complain all they want about the ministries that they're going to get, everything like that. But Yamina is only two or three people. It's only two or three people. So two or three people can't get five ministries. That's what, that's what Yamina is. It's only two or three, two, two or three people. Everything else is the national union. It's, a, it's the Jewish home. Those are different parties. They're not Yamina. And they're the ones that got hurt the most by Yamina. And I, I think everybody would be much better off if Bennett would step away from politics. Just Anything. one caveat to it, David. People, most people respected Naftali Bennett as defense minister for the short time that he had the job. So he may have done something well. And if he were to get one to. ministry, but not the education ministry, something of a little bit more strength, it probably would have pa could pass. And the other thing is, all these other people get guaranteed slots too that are really not deserving of the slots. So it kind of diminishes the reasoning for a guy like, what's his name having the health ministry, uh, Litzman, and Derry having the interior ministry, which he was indicted and imprisoned for previously, okay? So it doesn't look so good that the one you pick is the most right-wing guy out of the group. I'm just saying. Yeah, but you have, right? to look, you have to look. I mean, right now, you saw, I'm sure you saw the article. Everybody saw the article that was published um, after, after Pesach, after Passover, that Israel, when it comes to the coronavirus, 
is the safest country in the world. And why is that? It's because of Litzman. So you can say what you want about Litzman, you can <laughs> say what you want about Derry, but the, whatever, they, they are part of, they're running their parties, they're the head of their parties, they get the ministries. And they don't even want a ministry, they want to be deputy ministers. They don't want to, they don't want minister, they don't want to get extra money. Most people want to get the ministry because they get a lot of extra larger pay. And, you know, the only one I respect when it comes to that is Nir Barkat. There's things I don't like about him, but I ha you have to respect a man that comes. He is a very wealthy man, just as wealthy as Bennett. Bennett is just as wealthy as Barkat. But the difference is, is Bennett still gets paid 40, 50,000 shekels a month from the government. And Nir Barkat gets paid one shekel a year. Just like Donald Trump gets one dollar. Well, I don't think it's fair to judge them based on who gets his pay and who doesn't get his pay. What I, no, not it's really. Not about, it's not about that. What we're judging him on. Can I say something? I think that's yes. kind of irrelevant. The important thing is what kind of we have to have a right wing government in the future. One answer is if no, if they can't form a government in the next three weeks, it automatically goes to election. The earliest time we can even possibly have an election, according to everything, is September. So that's a big problem. But also, you know, because of the way, like David said, the uh, the government with BB and Lithman and whoever else is on the task force, the coronavirus, has done very well. And the people see it, the people appreciate it. And according to polls now, without any help from anybody else, the, the coalition of 50, 58 now will rise to at least 64 on its own. So if we go to elections next time, there's a very, very good chance we won't have to negotiate with people like Gans, Lapid, or anybody else. And what it was showing was that the Likud went up to 40, which is huge. Right, but that 40 with the others comes to 64. Yeah. And we'll have a government. Either way, so if BB doesn't form a government now, then when it comes to the elections, he'll be able to form a government later, which is very good for Israel. Well, even if they form a government, it's ridiculous of them to try to form a three-year government because that has no chance in hell. So let's hope for something small, like maybe a two-year government, and then you have a little stability for two years. Maybe you'll make it past the year, maybe you won't, but you're never going to make it past three years. So all these people who are going to cry about their ministries and everything else don't have to wait so long, and in two years you have a new election. Why are you pushing for three years is beyond anything I can say. It makes any sense. Okay. Elon, what else do you have to summarize today's discussion? Well, I think that uh, Paul really hit the nail on the head just now about the current crisis, that if God willing, we continue to perform the way we are performing, uh, the Likud specifically and the right in general would benefit immensely in, in the next elections. Uh, even if those elections would be, let's say, if there is a unity government temporarily and then it would fall apart after a year or a year and a half, people are not going to forget this anytime soon. And as for blue and white and what we call the Israeli center, uh, I think that um, if there is a unity government and uh, Gantz gets uh, foreign ministry or defense ministry along with Ashkenazi and they perform according to what Prime Minister Netanyahu expects and follow his policies, I think that they would uh, probably do themselves a favor electorally long term. Uh, although they wouldn't be the force they were before, but they try to bring in new players like uh, perhaps Guy de Eisenkot, the former chief of staff, maybe one of the former heads of the Shin Bet, really make themselves into a security party somewhere along the center, center right, somewhere along the lines of uh, Amnon Lipkin Shachak, uh, Zichon Olavracha, if you remember a few years back with Yitzhak Mordechai and a center party they tried to create, but really didn't last that long. Uh, Lapid has Yeshati, they have their policies, they have their positions, they have their electoral base. At the end of the day, all these quote unquote center parties are really feeding off the fact that the Israeli left does not exist anymore. What exists is a few very extreme elements that uh, vote for what is the remnants of the Labour Party and merits and have become more and more irrelevant. And everything has shifted to what uh, the press likes to call the center parties. Okay. It's amazing, it's amazing that Benny Gantz and everybody else, all these leaders on the left or center left, have not offered any solution or any helpful 
information on coronavirus at all. And they claim they're doing this because they want to solve the problem. They don't have any solution to anything. It's amazing. They're awful. Their agenda is only not BB. Anyway, yeah. Elon, as you are a special guest today, we'd like to have, perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about what you do and your position and what's going on with the leak could Anglos of Tel Aviv. I Look understand. Anglo division. Yeah, that too. Lee, would you yell at me, Paul? Liquid Anglo Division. We are okay. the Liquid Anglo Division. Okay, Liquid Anglo Division of Tel Aviv? Yes. Uh, I'm a Likud member for a number of years already. And in the last uh, few years, uh, I've been uh, more and more involved with English speakers, thanks to, uh, thanks to Paul. Um, I, myself, personally uh, grew up in Israel until I was about six years old. Then uh, my parents, who are uh, from the States, moved back to the States. The connection with Israel was always very strong and always, uh, you know, uh, coming here, traveling here. And, and my Zionist uh, background is, uh, is at my core. Uh, in the last few years, again, as I say, more and more, not just with Hebrew speakers, but with English speakers. And, uh, and we had a, a wonderful event with Nir Barkat uh, at uh, one of my uh, residences in Tel Aviv. And that went well. And trying to get, you know, a lot of the um, hidden right-wing and hidden Likud votes out in the Tel Aviv area. There's more than you would imagine, but it's still an uphill battle. Uh, but again, I think things are changing. I think they're changing for the better when it comes to the Likud. Very good. Happy to hear that. David, what's new in Beit Shemesh? Anything new lately? I mean, you got a mayor. She's like in the limelight quite a bit, I see, with the coronavirus and stuff. Uh, I don't know. You know so she was in Israel. Like, yo, she was Jemish in the is, Post. But Jemish is very interesting, I think, because uh, I think, and it's very telling if you actually look at what's going on. Uh, the media love Eliza Bloch. Okay, the media love Eliza Bloch, and there's a reason that the media loves Eliza Bloch, and that's a big hint to what I'm referring to. So you can think about what that means when the media loves anybody. It usually means something that's not necessarily right for the Likud. So uh, right now in Bechemish, I mean, the Likud is doing uh, amazing work here. I mean, they've brought in huge amounts of money uh, to build Bechemish, the roads, uh, you know, different things like that. Uh, I think Bechemish is probably one of the only cities in the country that has concerts all over the city every night of the week. Uh, literally, there's, they bring, uh, you know, singers by our, by our apartment complex uh, throughout all of the Chemish, they bring singers every single night and music and this, the kids all want to go and see. It's fantastic because we're all stuck inside. Um, Aliza Bloch, you know, a lot of broken promises and very anti Likud, it seems like going against the Likud. Uh, so it's a, it's a real big struggle because obviously we want to do the best for the city. And they are, we are doing the best for, that we can for the city and, you know, infrastructure and cleanliness and all this kind of stuff. But when you have somebody that's coming against you, when you're bringing in a lot of this, these things, it's, uh, it's very difficult. So she tends, uh, a lot of her staff members are out from outside of the city, which until now, almost everybody in the city was actually from the city. So the, the money from our taxes was going to people in the city itself. And now she's brought in a lot of people from Tel Aviv, a lot of, you know, very, uh, you know, not necessarily what, what the, the Likud stands by uh, when it comes to local things. Uh, from a national, from national wise, I think it was very clear that we saw that uh, everywhere across Bet Shemesh, the, uh, we were able to increase the voting uh, for the Likud by, I think it was around 6,000 votes. So we brought in an extra 6,000 votes from the second elections and the third elections. And I believe that we'll be able to do even better than that in, in a fourth elections if there is, whether it's in three months or whether it's in, uh, in a year from now. So. Okay. Uh, I think it's that time of day, evening. What's that? Does anybody have last comments? 60 seconds. Well, I, 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 I want to hear what's going on in Falsava and Ranana. I mean, you, my father, 
or you know, or in Kfar Sava in Ranana. You heard about. I'll tell you what. I'm going to give all my 30 seconds. So now you have a full 60 seconds because I don't think anything is going on with Likud in Ranana. So go ahead. Paul, nothing's going on that I'm aware of. You know, I go out once a month, once a week to get groceries. That's about it. Or I, I, you know, I take my 100 meter walk to the, you know, throw out my garbage. It's very, very quiet here. You know, when I went grocery shopping, I ran, I rode up Weissman Street. It's closed. The only thing open is a couple of food stores. So there's nothing going on, and it's quiet. I How's the Likud I, world going on? How is the what? The Likud chapter in Kfar Sa. How do I know? I don't hear from anybody or okay, anything. Okay, that's all. We were talking well, about it's quiet. I mean, people don't have what to talk about because there's only one thing going on right now, and that's the coronavirus. And the sooner it's over, the sooner life will go back to normal. But we have to live what we have to live with and make the best of it. Okay, so we're signing off. Uh, we are going to have a regular broadcast every week, I believe, on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Israel, uh, daylight savings time, right? And I, I, I like to thank Elon for joining us tonight, and uh, I'm sure we'll invite him back sometime in the future. Look over to him so he can see. Huh? Well, how do I know? I'm, I, you know... Yes, I'm what's that? You. You're right in the center of the screen, you know. You, you have to see the top, you know. No, I was just saying thank you to Paul. Thank you, John. Thanks, thank you to David. It was wonderful being with thank you. Thank you. We'll talk again soon. That's David, good. always a pleasure. Paul. Yeah, hey, John, John yes, this is what? It, it's right after Passover. I was expecting some John's Place pizza. And, and I, yeah, you know, well, I that's that. tonight. I can't open till tonight. So, okay. You know what I mean? It's still Chag, where I come from, where John's Place Pizza comes from. Right. Thanks, for the, thanks for the plug, though. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, everybody. Boca Raton. Bye. Who, who shuts us off? You, David?